Hey guys, today I want to present a solution to the Romanian Masters of Mathematics 2023 problem 1. At first, let's have a look on the problem statement. We are asked to find all prime numbers p and positive integers x and y such that the equation x to the power of 3 plus y to the power of 3 is equal to p times xy plus p holds. In the beginning, we want to factor the left hand side to get that x plus y times x squared minus xy plus y squared is equal to p times xy plus p. Since p is a prime number, we know that p must divide one of the two factors on the left hand side and therefore we want to consider both of these cases. So let's start with the first case that p divides x plus y. If p is equal to x plus y, we get a really nice equation because the x plus y term cancels out on both sides. So let's have a look on this case that p is equal to x plus y and we get that the left hand side is then x squared minus xy plus y squared and on the right hand side we have xy plus x plus y. Bringing the x times y to the left hand side we see that we have x squared minus 2xy plus y squared on the left hand side which is equal to x minus y squared and this should be now equal to x plus y but since x plus y is equal to p is a prime number this is a contradiction because a prime number can't be a perfect square. So this case is impossible and therefore we know that p is less than or equal to x plus y divided by 2. We can bound the right side from above to get that x plus y divided by 2 times xy plus x plus y divided by 2 is greater than or equal to p times xy plus p which is equal to x plus y times x squared minus xy plus y squared and now we can use the amdm inequality to bound this here from below by x plus y times xy. Dividing by x plus y gives us that xy is less than or equal to xy plus x plus y divided by 2 or divided by 2. And now since x and y are both positive integers, we can bound x and y by x times y. So this is less than or equal to xy plus 2 times xy divided by 2 or divided by 2 and this is equal to xy. On the left side and on the right side of our inequality we have the same term and therefore we must have equality in every case and this means since we bounded x by xy and y by xy that the only possible case here is that x is equal to y is equal to 1. Since p is less than or equal to x plus y over 2 this gives us that p is less than or equal to 1, which is clearly a contradiction. We already figured out that p does not divide x plus y and we also brought the case that p is less than or equal to x plus y divided by 2 to a contradiction without using the fact that p divides x plus y. Therefore, we can from now on assume that p is greater than x plus y divided by 2. From the fact that p does not divide x plus y, we know that p must divide the second factor here on the left hand side. So we get that p divides x squared minus xy plus y squared. Moreover, if we divide this equation here by p and x plus y, the left hand side is an integer and therefore the right hand side must be also an integer. So we also get that x plus y must divide xy plus p. Our goal is to alter the right hand sides here of the divisibility conditions in order to combine these in some way. Since we can add some multiples of x plus y here to the right hand side, our idea is to also get some multiples of x plus y on the right hand side in this condition here. So we write that p divides x plus y squared because here we have that this is equal to x squared plus 2xy plus y squared. So we have to subtract 3 times xy. We see that we can subtract 3 times p from the right hand side because it's a multiple of p. And now 
This term here is equal to minus 3 times the right hand side of this condition here. This is nice because now we can bring the right hand side in this condition here into exactly the same form. At first we know that x plus y divides x plus y all squared and we can also subtract 3 times this right hand side here. So we can write a minus 3 times xy plus p. Indeed, this term here on the right hand side is exactly the same term as this one and therefore since p does not divide x plus y and p is a prime number, this gives us that also p times x plus y must divide this term. The idea is now to bound the left hand side from above by the right hand side because we know that if some term a divides a term b, a is less than or equal to the absolute value of b or b is equal to zero. So we have three possible cases, namely that the right hand side here is positive or negative or is equal to zero. We call the right side here capital B and want to start with, with the first case that capital B is greater than zero. In this case we can write p times x plus y is greater than x plus y squared divided by 2 if we use this inequality there. And now, since xy plus p is positive, we can bound this from below by b divided by 2. Since p times x plus y divides b and b is greater than 0, we indeed get that p times x plus y must be equal to b, which is equal to x plus y squared minus 3 times xy plus p. We want to solve this equation here for factors from this equation here above and therefore we get xy plus p is equal to x plus y times x plus y minus p over 3 and x squared minus xy plus y squared is equal to p times x plus y plus 3. You can check by yourself that this is true as a small exercise. Multiplying these two equations gives us that xy plus p times p times x plus y plus 3 is equal to x plus y times x plus y minus p times x squared minus xy plus y squared all over 3. Using our first equation, the xy plus p times p term can cancels out with the x plus y times x squared minus xy plus y squared term and we are left with x plus y plus 3 is equal to x plus y minus p divided by 3 but this is impossible since x and y are both positive integers. Let's go on with the second case that b is less than 0 and here we get that p times x plus y must be less than or equal to 3 times xy plus p minus x plus y squared. By the AMG inequality we know that x plus y squared is greater than or equal to 4xy. So we have that this is less than or equal to 3 times p minus xy. This is less than 3 times p and now by dividing by p we get that x plus y is less than 3. Since x and y are both positive integers, this implies that x equals y equals 1. And now we can plug in x and y into this equation to get that 2 is equal to p times 1 plus p. And for example, we can bound this by 1 plus p to get that p is less than 1, which is clearly a contradiction. We are left with the third case that b is equal to 0, which means that x plus y squared is equal to 3 times xy plus p. And here we can bring the 3 times xy to the left hand side to get that x squared minus xy plus y squared is equal to 3 times p. Multiplying these two equations here gives us that x plus y all squared times 
x squared minus xy plus y squared is equal to 9 times p times xy plus p. Here we can again use our equation from above to cancel out the x plus y times x squared minus xy plus y squared on the left hand side with the p times xy plus p on the right hand side and therefore we conclude that x plus y is equal to 9. Together with the fact that both x and y are positive integers, there are only 8 possible cases left. We decided to leave this last step as an exercise for you and as a hint you can use this equation here to calculate the value of p. If you did everything right, you will end up with exactly 6 solutions and then we are done.